Good morning, sisters and brothers, and welcome to this morning's morning prayer. It's uh, Wednesday, the 30th of March. And so let's pray as we start this new day afresh that God has granted to us by his grace. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Hear our voice, O Lord, according to your faithful love. According to your judgment, bring us life. Blessed are you, God of compassion and mercy. To you be praise and glory forever. In the darkness of our sin, your light breaks forth like the dawn and your healing springs up for deliverance. As we rejoice in the gift of, this, of your saving help, sustain us with your bountiful spirit and open our lips to sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Have mercy on me, O God, in your great goodness. According to the abundance of your compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my faults and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and righteous in your judgment. Cast me not away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Give me again the joy of, sal of your salvation, and sustain me with your gracious spirit. Then shall I teach your ways to the wicked, and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from my guilt, O God, the God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. You are the God of my salvation. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. In you I hope all the day long. O my God, in you I trust. Remember, Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. And um, the Benedictus, the Song of Zachariah. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. 
This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. <clears throat> And our psalm this morning is Psalm 90, Psalm 9-0. Psalm 90 is attributed to Moses, one of the, I think, only two psalms attributed to Moses, or maybe it's the only one. Uh. Psalm 90, Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the whole world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn people back to dust, saying, return to dust, you mortals. A thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by, or like a watch in the night. Yet you sweep people away in the sleep of death. They are like the new grass of the morning. In the morning it springs up new, but by evening it is dry and withered. We are consumed by your anger and terrified by your indignation. We have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. All our days pass away under your wrath. We finish our years with a moan. Our days may come to 70 years or 80 if our strength endures. Yet the best of them are but trouble and sorrow, for they quickly pass and we fly away. If only we knew the power of your anger, your wrath is as great as the fear that is your due. Teach us to number our days, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Relent, Lord, how long will it be? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love, that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days you have afflicted us, for as many years as we have seen trouble. May your deeds be shown to your servants your splendor to your children. May the favor of the Lord our God rest on us. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. <clears throat> and the prayer for this psalm 
Almighty God, our eternal refuge, teach us to live with the knowledge of our death and to rejoice in the promise of your glory revealed to us in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Psalm 90, a great psalm meditating on our frailty, indeed on, on, on death itself. Um, Return to dust, you mortals, says the Lord. Um, but it's also a, a, a meditation on God. The everlastingness of God and the, the mortality of our lives. The immortality of God and the mortality of humanity. In comparison with God, we are mere dust. And, and, and he is the one who sweeps away who sweeps us away in the sleep of death. In like the grass in the morning we spring we spring up, but in the evening dry and withered. That's the, the fickleness of life, the fragility of life, the fleetingness of life, says the psalmist. We are we, we are here today and gone tomorrow. Um, we don't last. In this life, we don't last. And so the years that God has given us, they pass away. He says, God may give us 70 or even 80 years and some even go longer. But the point he's making is that firstly, even the best of those years are filled with sorrow and trouble. The best of them are filled with sorrow and trouble. No, no matter how long we live in this world, even the best years have trouble and sorrow. And yet the day is coming when we will they will quickly pass away and we fly away. We, we, we leave this body. We leave this world, as it were. And he says, and he said, he, he, he's, he, he's appealing to God. Relent, Lord. How long will it be? Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Keep us to keep track of our lives, to to. To, to, to reflect on each day. You know, sometimes we get up and we say, where did the, the days go? Where have the years gone? You know, you wake up one morning and you're 50 and you're like, wow, what happened in 50 years? Where have the time gone? That's what he's saying. Teach us to be aware of every moment of every day because before we know it, it's gone so that we may gain a heart of wisdom. In other words, know how to live, know how to conduct ourselves tomorrow if we reflect on how we lived today and, and so on. So yeah, it's a great psalm. Well, let's leave that there. But um, uh, And then the last prayer, may the favor of the Lord our God rest upon us. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes establish the work of our hands it's it's as if the psalmist is saying lord make what i do count make my life significant make the things i do this the work of my hands have significance and meaning in my life establish the work of my hands uh, use the things i do to bring meaning and, 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 and purpose to, to my life. Uh, and and that's, that's a prayer. That's our prayer. Amen. Let's, let's, let's move forward. Um, let's, um, let's do the collect for this week. Merciful Lord. Absolve your people from their offenses, that through your bountiful goodness, we may all be delivered from the chains of those sins which by our frailty we have committed. Grant this, Heavenly Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our blessed Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. We're going to look at our... First reading, but just a second. <coughs> A 
Okay. Our reading is Exodus chapter 4, from verse 1 to 23. Exodus chapter 4. But Moses protested again. What if they won't believe me or listen to me? What if they say, the Lord never appeared to you? Then the Lord asked him, what is that in your hand? A shepherd's staff, Moses replied. Throw it down on the ground. The Lord told him. So Moses threw down the staff and it turned into a snake. Moses jumped back. Then the Lord told him, reach out and grab its tail. So Moses reached out and grabbed it and it turned back into a shepherd's staff in his hand. Perform this sign, the Lord told him. Then they will believe that the Lord, the God of, our, of their ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob really has appeared to you. Then the Lord said to, J to, to, to Moses, now put your hand inside your cloak. So Moses put his hand inside his cloak. And when he took it out again, his hand was white as snow with a severe skin disease. Now put your hand back into your cloak, the Lord said. So Moses put his hand back in and when he took it out again, it was as healthy as the rest of his body. The Lord said to Moses, if they do not believe you and are not convinced by the first miraculous sign, they will be convinced by the second. And if they don't believe you or listen to you even after these two signs, then take some water from the Nile River and pour it out on the dry ground. When you do, the water from the Nile will turn to blood on the ground. But Moses pleaded with the Lord, O oh Lord, I am not very good with words. I never have been, and I'm not even... And I am not now, even though you have spoken to me. I get tongue-tied and my words get tangled. <laughs> then the Lord asked Moses, Who makes a person's mouth? Who decides whether that person speak or do not speak? Hear or do not hear? See or do not see? Is it not I the Lord? Now go, I will be with you as you speak, and I will instruct you in what to say. But Moses again pleaded, Lord, please send someone else. Then the Lord became angry with Moses. All right, he said. What about your brother Aaron the Levite? I know he speaks well. And, I, and look. He's on his way to meet you now. He will be delighted to see you. Talk to him and put the words in his mouth. I will be with both of you as you speak. And I will instruct you both in, in what to do. Aaron will be your spokesman to the people. He will be your mouthpiece. And you, will, and you will stand in the place of God for him, telling him what to say. And take your shepherd's staff with you and use it to perform the miraculous signs I have shown you. So Moses went back home to Jethro, his father-in-law. Please let me return to my relatives in Egypt, Moses said. I don't even know if they are still alive. Go in peace, Jethro replied. Before Moses left Midian, the Lord said to him, Return to Egypt, for all those who wanted to kill you have died. So Moses took his wife and sons, put them on a donkey, and headed back to the land of Egypt. 
In his hand he carried the staff of God. And the Lord told Moses, When you arrive back in Egypt, go to Pharaoh and perform all the miracles I have empowered you to do. But I will harden his heart, so he will refuse to let the people go. Then you will tell him, This is what the Lord says, Israel is my firstborn son. I commanded you, let my people go so he can worship me. But since you have refused, I will now kill your firstborn son. All right, so <clears throat> this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll stop there. All right, so Moses is commissioned and, and, and given a task. Go to Pharaoh. And go to the well. Go to the elders of Israel, because he needs to win their them over as well, because they need to accept that he's a deliverer, he's a savior to come to to save them. <laughs> and then go to Pharaoh, and then you perform all these signs, and these signs are the means by which um, God is going to um, testify, as it were, that Moses is. God's servant. You, you, you see, you, you, Moses is not able to do miracles, signs on his own. So the signs are, are pointing away from Moses to God. The signs are saying, this person is from God. Um, so the staff turns to snake, the hand turns to, to leprosy or, or to skin disease. The water turn into blood. These are the three signs that God gave to Moses himself. Uh, apart from the burning bush is another sign. And, um, <clears throat> and these signs, Moses, Moses is commanded to perform in front of the people and in front of Pharaoh. Um, Moses uh, has some excuses as well. Not just, not just his own inadequacy, but he's... His excuse, um, I don't really want to go, um, I, I can't speak well, I'm not a really good speaker, I'm not a very good talker, uh, I get tongue-tied. Um, you know, some, some, some commentators think that he might have even have a stammer. Um, and, and Moses' basic point is that I'm inadequate for this task. And choose someone else, Lord. You know, I'm not the right person for this job. <laughs> I mean, telling God, you know, that you've got it wrong, God. Um, I'm just not the right person here. It's really what Moses is saying. God, I think you've just got it wrong this time. Um, choose someone else. And God said, all right, then. I will, I will choose your brother Aaron. He will talk for you. But you will be my mouthpiece. You will be... You will be like God, as it were, to Aaron. You will be, um, you are my messenger. Aaron is more like the prophet who speaks on my behalf. You are acting on my behalf. So, so Moses is God's representative. Aaron is there to speak for Moses, what God tells Moses to tell him. So God did concede to Moses to at least one of Moses' requests to send someone else. But it didn't quite work out that way. It didn't really send someone else. He just gives him an assistant to help him along the way because Moses claims that he is inadequate for the task. And God says, who makes the mouth? Who makes the eyes? And so on. Uh, is it not I? In other words, I can make you able to speak, Moses. I mean, I know you are inadequate. I know you're not a very good speaker. But trust me, I can make you into a great speaker. That is not a task. That is not, a, that is not any difficult task for me. But really, those are just excuses. I know you don't really want to go. That's really the issue. The issue is not about whether you... You are adequate up to you are, you, are, you are up to the task. The issue is that you don't really want to go. So I am going to concede and give you your brother Aaron to assist you. He says God's mercy in giving 
in, 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 in his accession to Moses' claim that Moses was inadequate. It's, you know, it's a powerful point here because, you know, we all feel inadequate when God calls us to do something, especially if God truly calls us to do something. We always feel a sense of inadequacy. Uh, um, you know, God, choose someone else, please. I'm, I'm just not the right person for this. And yet God says, no, I will be with you, just like he says here to Moses. And I, and I will give you the words to say, and I will give you the signs to perform. You know, all of these things are God's doing. Moses has no power in himself to do any of this. All right, let's move on. New Testament reading. And we are in uh, Hebrews chapter, Hebrews chapter 10, Hebrews chapter 10 from verse 1 to 18. Hebrews 10, 1 to 18. Uh, the old system under the law of Moses was only a shadow, a dim preview of the good things to come, not the good things themselves. The sacrifices under that system were repeated again and again, year after year, but they were never able to provide perfect cleansing for those who came to worship. If they could have provided perfect cleansing, the sacrifices would have, would have stopped. For the worshippers would have been purified once for all time. And their feelings of guilt would have disappeared. But instead, those sacrifices actually reminded them of their sins year after year. For it is not possible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. That is why when Christ came into the world, he said to God, You did not want animal sacrifices or sin offerings, but you have given me a body to offer. You were not pleased with burnt offerings or other offerings for sin. Then I said, Look, I have come to do your will, O God, as is written about me in the scriptures. First, Christ said, you did not want animal sacrifices or sin offerings or burnt offerings or other offerings for sin, nor were you pleased with them, though they are required by the law of Moses. <coughs> Then he said, look, I have come to do your will. He cancels the first covenant in order to put the second into effect. For God's will was for us to be made holy by the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all time. Under the old covenant, the priest stands and ministers before the altar day after day, offering the same sacrifices again and again, which can never take away sins. But our high priest offered himself to God as a single sacrifice for sins, good for all time. Then he sat down in the place of honor at, the right, at God's right hand. There he waits until his, this, his enemies are humbled and made a footstool under his feet. For by that one offering, he forever made perfect those who are being made perfect, made holy. And the Holy Spirit also testified that this is so, for he says, this is the new covenant I will make with my people on that day, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts and I will write them on their minds. Then he says, I will never again remember their sins and lawless deeds. And when sins have been forgiven, 
there is no need to offer any more sacrifices. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And as I look at the time, I realize the time is gone. But um, just to just to summarize this great this great text, the main point here is that the coming of Christ, the sacrifice of Christ is the one sacrifice that can truly cleanse us of all our sins. All the other sacrifices were shadows pointing to the, uh, to the reality. He said in verse 1, the old system under the law of Moses was only a shadow, a dim preview of the good things to come, not the good things themselves. It was a mere glimpse into the reality. But they were not the reality themselves. The reality is in Christ, the coming of Christ, the, the blood of Christ, the body of Christ is the perfect sacrifice for our sin. And so the, the, all of those things that, were, that used to happen, he said, if, the, if animal sacrifices could have, could have um, take away sins, then it wouldn't need to be happen every time. But it, it needed to happen because it did not cleanse the guilty conscience. So Christ came into the world and his sacrifice is an everlasting sacrifice. In other words, his sacrifice has everlasting effect, eternal effect. Um, one sacrifice that has eternal value for all time and for all people everywhere. And that's the power of the sacrifice of Jesus, the power of the blood, the power of the body of Christ is that this body, you know, first, verse 10, for God's will was for us to be made holy by the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all time. It was for it was God's will that we be made holy by the body, the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ. Once for all, this one sacrifice is has eternal value. And that's what makes this sacrifice so fundamentally different from all the others that went before. All the others were merely pointing to this one. All the others were a shadow, a preview, a dim preview of what is to come. And Jesus is that final sacrifice for our lives. And now, of course, this is a reminder to us, sisters and brothers, that there is nothing that we can do to gain our forgiveness. There is nothing that we can do in ourselves to, to earn our, um, our um, forgiveness, our righteousness, our holiness before God. All of this is like, are like the shadows and types. All of our deeds, all of our goodness, all of our own righteousness are like shadows pointing to the reality. The reality is Christ, and it is only in him will we find forgiveness, eternal forgiveness, eternal life. Um, and, and so no matter what we do in ourselves, we will never be able to cleanse ourselves by our own, by our own physical sacrifices that we offer every day. Those things are, will never, nothing we do in ourselves will ever bring us the, sac the salvation that we need. Only the body of Christ can do this. Amen. Let's pray. Time is gone, really. Our Father, thank you for, for this day that you've given us. We pray, Lord, that you will uh, sustain us today. Watch over our going and coming. Keep us safe. Uh, protect us. In our, in, in our travels, we ask, Lord, that you will uh, grant us grace to be more like Jesus, uh, to reflect his love and mercy in our lives today. We thank you for the eternal sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ, who through his death has secured our life. And in his sacrifice, we have freedom from guilt, freedom from fear forgiveness of our sins once and for all time. And so, Lord, we thank you. 
we thank you that we no need to make sacrifices for our sins because all sacrifices have come to an end in Christ. Lord, thank you. Thank you for the blood of Christ. Thank you for the body of Christ. Through his body, we are, our bodies are redeemed through his blood. Our consciences are cleansed from dead, from dead works, from, from guilt. Lord, thank you, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer, Lord, as we pray for those in, those we know, those in our own community, those who are sick and suffering in any way. Remember them today. Remember those on our prayer list in our church family. Remember those who are who are who have hospital appointments for various reasons. Think of Noel and Doreen this week. Lord, remember them. Remember those who are in pain and suffering. Whatever their pain, Lord, whatever the cause of the pain, we pray. We pray for relief from pain. We pray for healing and strength. We pray for perseverance in suffering. Lord, remember those who suffer today. We pray especially for my friend Maxine's mom who fell um, yesterday in Ilford. We pray, Lord, that you will you'll bring a speedy recovery to her. We thank you that that uh, it's not as it's not as worse or as bad as it could be. But we pray, Lord, for 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 full healing. We pray for the doctors and nurses who are looking after her in hospital. And so, Lord, for these and many others, we, 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 we trust, we entrust into your care. And we ask for your, for your intervention in their lives. Lord, we pray for our world. And indeed, we pray for the, for the conflicts in our world. We pray, Lord, that you will bring, bring an end to the suffering and the, and the wars and the evils in our world. We, we pray for the people of Gaza, we pray for the innocent sufferers, the children, the elderly, the sick, the vulnerable. Lord, our God, have mercy on the people of Gaza. We pray for an end to this fighting between Israel and Hamas. Lord, have mercy on them and we pray for, the, for some lasting peace. Lord, we, we, we cannot see it in ourselves, but we know nothing is impossible to you. We pray for, for lasting peace in the Holy Land between the Jews and the Arabs, between these two groups of people living on this strip of land. Lord, have mercy. We pray for Ukraine and the suffering that they are going through as a result of the aggressive war of Putin. Lord, we pray for that, the end of that war. We pray for the change, a change of mind, a change of heart in Putin. And uh, that this war will come to an end and, the, and the, the, the needless, the useless loss of life, waste of life will stop. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the people of Sudan and indeed wherever else in the world there's conflict and violence. We pray for those in Sudan. Lord, especially the refugees who are fleeing the war and the violence. Look after them, we pray. Watch over them, O oh God, and protect them. We pray for, for the end to all these wars and the end to the civil war. And wherever there is conflict or unrest, like in Haiti, remember those people as well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we pray for your church. We ask for your for your intervention in the affairs of your church, that you will bless your people wherever your church may be in the four corners of this world and indeed right here in this community. We pray for your blessing upon your people, that we may be a blessing to those around us. Shine your light upon us so that we may reflect your light to the world. Lord, Make us faithful witnesses for you in whatever community or context you place us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be with us, Lord, in all our prayers and direct our way toward the attainment of salvation that among the changes and chances of this mortal life, we may always be defended by your gracious help 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly upon you and give you his eternal peace and blessing today. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed day, sisters and brothers.